What's up YouTube? Uh, today I want to create a simple thinking particle system like this one here. Basically it's a very simple system. We emit particles, collides with a sphere, travels along the surface for a little bit and they kind of drop off and hit the ground plane. And they're also separated separated into particle events, color coded. I think this is a good place to start uh, thinking particles. Simple system like this one. Uh, for a long time, I avoided using thinking particles because, to be honest, I don't think uh, Cinema 4D is a great application. But when it comes to the setting up particle systems and stuff, uh, I don't find it very intuitive. Uh, you definitely have to. There's lots of little things that you need to know. It's definitely not something you can just jump into. I think uh, 3D, 3D Studio Max's P flow is a little bit more uh, intuitive in that way. Uh, but anyway, enough with the Cinema 4D bashing. I'm just going to create a new scene and we can get started. So, first, I'm going to create the collision objects we're going to use. I'll create a plane. I'm just going to increase the width and the height to 600. Hit C to make it editable. And uh, I'm just going to zoom out. You can use the 1, 2, 3 keys instead of going up here. Uh, 1, 2, and 3 are the viewport shortcut keys. Uh, I'm going to add a sphere object. Just move that up. Make it slightly smaller, maybe. Mm, it's actually alright. Just hit C, make that editable. So that's the second collision object. There's enough space, just checking the space. Whoops. Disappear. And uh, <clears throat> finally, I'm going to create a null object that we're going to use as the emitter, emitter position. I'll call this, actually, I'll just call it null. And uh, what we can do is, if you want, you can change the null. Uh, look I'm gonna create maybe a point and I'm gonna change the color to a sort of yellow orangish color so we've got the simple scene hidden line I like working with so that's the setup now we're gonna add a expresso tag to the null object opens up the expresso window we have to generate some particles so we'll create new node thinking particles thinking particle generator P storm. Just add that in. Now, if we just play the scene, it's going to start emitting from the origin. I want it to emit from the null object we created, so I'm just going to drop in the null like that. Just drag it out. I'm going to choose the global position and the global matrix ports. On P storm, I'm going to select emitter alignment. Now the reason I haven't chosen a rotation is because the alignment does not match up with the rotation. It's a vector to, I think this is matrix, yeah. So a workaround is uh, to use the global matrix, link that to the alignment and the position to the position. And now if we play the scene, it's submitting from the null object. I'm just going to hit R and uh, rotate this 90 degrees downwards. So it's facing the right way. Unfortunately, you can't see an update until you uh, rewind and hit play. But now those particles are uh, emitting in the right direction. Except it's kind of big. Uh, I want to adjust a few settings, maybe. Uh, if I just go into Expresso, click P-Storm here, we can actually adjust the attributes. I'm going to increase the count. I'm going to make the life 160, the same length as my timeline. Uh, the speed, I'm going to maybe increase up to 180. The size, I think this is the particle geometry size, so I'm just going to leave that. And I'm going to uh, narrow the kind of spread. And I'm just going to narrow the overall size. I'm just going to make it smaller. So let's just have a look at those settings. Um, maybe a little bit narrower, make that 44, 44, just make it smaller, okay, that'll do for now. Uh, 
I'm just going to quickly add a gravity, so go, um, go into simulate particles gravity and I'm going to use this uh, later on. Thinking particles, I've uh, snapped my thinking particles tab which is normally located on the simulate thinking particles thinking particle settings. I've um, snapped it to the side here, I find it much more convenient. If we just go into particle groups, click, right click and uh, click add. I'm just going to set up some quick particle groups. So birth, an event for the sphere collision, and then I'm going to add an event for the final stage when it collides with the ground. Just call this ground call. Names are not important. I'm just going to change the colors just so I can uh, distinguish between the separate events. Ground collision, make it kind of green. So we've got these three, uh, maybe make that a bit brighter. <clears throat> so now I'm not going to use all, I'm actually going to use these three events instead. So we can start with that, go back into the Expresso tag, choose particle birth, and add in a new node, thinking particles, standard P group. Now, one th uh, thing about uh, Expresso is there's actually two P group nodes, which can get quite confusing. One's in TP standard group, and in helper, you'll see there's another group. They're actually uh, different because they've got different types of uh, input and output ports, and uh, it can get quite confusing sometimes. But anyway, we link the particle birth to all. If I just click uh, think, think in particles, I'm going to drag and drop the birth group. So as soon as the particles are born, they go into the birth group. So if I hit play, we'll notice the colors changed, which means we're not using all anymore. We're uh, passing them on onto the birth group, uh, event. That's what we wanted. I'm just going to link the gravity we created earlier. Now. Uh, as you can see, I can't really do anything here. Uh, there's no output port, so how am I going to link gravity? We have to pass these particles into a new event, and we do that by using p pass. And it's it's just a simple little node that basically just passes all the particles into a new event. It's kind of almost like a a utility node. It's um, but all you have to know is that's what it does. It passes the particles. I'm going to create some dynamics nodes thinking particles, TP dynamic. I'm going to create the gravity and also we want it to collide with the sphere next. So I'm going to create a deflector and this isn't like the 3D Studio Max kind of old school plane deflector. You can actually uh, uh, attach objects to this. So I'm just going to drag and drop the gravity into P gravity and the sphere object into the deflector. So basically as soon as the particles are born kind of travel downwards and then I want them to collide with the sphere and also as soon as they're born I want gravity to affect them so we just link these two nodes up we'll just hit play see what happens as you can see the particles are going the wrong way this is because uh, gravity is facing the wrong way so if I just hit R to rotate this 90 degrees facing down I'm also just going to move it out the way quickly like that now if I hit play, um, particles are going the right way, except the collision uh, event doesn't seem to be kicking in, they're still just going right through the sphere. And we specified the sphere as a deflector, so what's the problem? The problem is the deflector type is set to box, so we need to set this to object, so it basically uses the object we chose. And now if we hit play quickly, now we've got a reaction. But these particles are way too bouncy. What we want them to do is travel along the surface, almost like uh, water dripping down the sides. So the bounce is not what we want. Luckily, there is a node that's already set up called surface. So if we reduce the bounce down to maybe four, we still want a little bit of bounce, but not too much. Set the surface to 96, something quite high. Now, if we hit play, the particles stick to the surface. Now there's two problems. One, they're not passing on to the new event. And two, they're not really moving. They're just kind of sticking and staying. So what I want to do next is
pass these particles into the sphere collision event because they've collided with the, with the sphere and I want them to become blue. I should make this a little bit brighter. So what I'll do is add a uh, two nodes uh, standard P set data we're going to use to change the group. I'll explain this in a minute. And uh, what's the next one? We also want to change the velocity when it hits. We don't want them. We don't want them to just sit there stuck. We want them to keep on moving. So we're going to have to use a p velocity node. Now, first thing, just ignore the velocity for now. We want to change the group. So we have to now reference the p pass pass the particles into the p set data. Add the on and group ports. Now basically when the collision occurs we can use the event port as a boolean to switch this on. So when the collision of event occurs this becomes active and this references the birth particles. So that's the basic setup. Now we want to plug something into the group node so they change groups. And this is a uh, Earlier on, I was telling you how there's uh, two types of P group. We're going to use the TP helper P group. I'm going to link that in here, like that, and then drag and drop the sphere collision into the P group node. And hopefully, now this should work. As you can see, they're passing into the new event. I'm just going to add the velocity, hook up the velocity, and they're moving very slowly. It's not the effect we want. So we've got p velocity. Again, we need to reference the p pass. And uh, also, I only want this to become active once it collides. So again, we can hook up the event to the p velocity. When the collision occurs, this becomes active, and this becomes active. So when this becomes active, I'm just going to select speed. I want the speed to increase dramatically. So set 500, see what happens. As you can see, they're still a bit slow, so I'm going to keep increasing this. Uh, maybe even 1200. Okay, now another problem we can notice is it's as if gravity stopped working. And this is because the p gravity is only applying to the birth particles. Now that we've got this new group, sphere, sphere collision, we have to um, link the gravity again. So I'm going to use p pass again. Uh, so basically, using p pass to separate our event groups, I'm going to add now the sphere collision particles to p pass. Thinking particles, dynamic, gravity. Just put the gravity in again. Drag and drop the gravity. I'm just going to link basically the sphere collision particles are affected by gravity. Because beforehand it was the birth particles that were being affected by gravity, and we have to re specify that. So if I hit, if I hit play now, as you can see, the gravity is occurring and we're getting a nice spilling effect. I'm just going to change the color because it's quite hard to see those particles. hope you can see them. So far so good. Uh, feel free to let, tweak any settings, make it kind of look better than what I've done here by adjusting the you can adjust the gravity settings, deflector. I'm just going to run through this quite quick. So the final stage, we want these particles to then collide, collide with the ground plane. So again, we're going to add a deflector, dynamic deflector. This time, drag and drop the plane object, and we're going to.